Good morning and welcome back to another video lesson recording. In today's video, we'll be discussing the aggregate demand and aggregate supply model. And this lecture is going to be in continuation uh, with our previous lecture about uh, GDP, inflation, and unemployment. So, the learning objectives of this particular lesson are that by the end of this lesson, you should be able to understand why the aggregate demand and aggregate supply model is important. You should be able to come up with the ASAD model and understand the factors that affect the model and be able to use it to interpret shocks that happen in the economy. This particular chapter is going to be focusing on the short run specifically and will not be discussing the long run and the main focus is going to be how to interpret what's going on in the economy in the short run due to unforeseen events happening in the economy like these days the coronavirus we want to figure out what happens to prices unemployment and GDP when such unforeseen events happen that is the main purpose of going through this model so but before we start with the model we want to, to talk about some basic things that uh, that are going to help us build the model so starting off i believe we've talked about the fiscal and monetary policy in one of our live sessions fiscal policy was the one proposed by the government in which they propose the amount of taxation they have to collect from the people and the plan on how much spending must be done during the fiscal year. The fiscal policy has to go through by parliamentary process and get approvals through the parliament. The monetary policy is the domain of the central bank. The central bank is an autonomous body that is separate from the government and they by controlling the money supply stabilize the economy and its macroeconomic factors and we discussed different f uh, tools uh, monetary policy open market operations which were buying and selling of bonds quantitative easing was printing money reserve ratio was the reserve the central bank tells the commercial banks to keep and the policy rate in our case was the interbank lending rate besides this in the last lecture we discussed two types of macroeconomics Keynesian economics and the classical side of economics in which we discussed how during the, se the recession in the 1930s the American economy went through uh, a long period of recession and it's known in history as the Great Depression which was caused by the fact that people had lost their money because of the crash in the stock market fall in aggregate demand had resulted in the recession happening. Prior to this, the main type of economics that was going around was called the classical economics, which said that supply would create its own demand, uh, which is called the sales law, which basically meant that if you had the, the ingredients to make the output, the price of the output didn't matter. That was the classical approach to economics. But after the Great Recession, people realized that if nobody wants to buy the goods, the suppliers will not be making the goods. And that is where the Keynesian side of macroeconomics started. It's called the demand side macroeconomics. So some basic facts about uh, the economy. In the short run, every economy is, is facing shocks because of which it faces fluctuations sometimes the economy is growing sometimes it's receding and this is a cyclical process but in the long run uh, the economy of most countries or the gdp of most countries is increasing uh, for the case of america they've been growing at 3 to 3.5 percent in the long run besides this we need to understand that uh, we we said that gdp was composed of consumption investment government spending and uh, net exports between consumption and investment investment is more volatile besides this 
we need to remember that whenever inflation happens gdp increases and whenever gdp increases unemployment falls and during recessions when when gdp is falling unemployment rises uh, last thing before we actually move on to the actual model is that in macroeconomics we'll be discussing and we'll be discussing what happens to the economy in the short run and in the long run and so to make our analysis simpler what we'll assume is that short run is the period in which many prices are sticky and at our at some predetermined level in the long run prices become flexible and then they can change what's important to understand is that the economy behaves differently both in the short and the long run so uh, now let's get to the real deal the main model this model is one of the most basic model used by economists and policy makers to answer the question ab kya hoga so since since you guys will are not becoming economists what you need to take from this model is the ability to understand what is going to happen in the economy because of a certain event you can use this asad model to come up with a logical answer about what is going to happen to the gdp what's going to happen to the price levels what's going to happen to unemployment that is the main purpose of us going through this asad model today starting off this asad model is just a relationship between gdp the economy's output and price levels and shows how the economy behaves in the short and the long run so we'll be starting off with the asad model today and uh, before we start with the model we want to discuss a couple of things about the asad model this asad model is going to be very similar to the demand and supply model that we discussed in the first half of the semester so we'll be starting from there and moving on to the whole economy so if you recall from from the start of the semester we we discussed market forces and how price was determined because of the market forces and we said that we'd be using a model in which you would be having price on one end and we'd have quantity of goods on the other and then there would be a demand curve the downward sloping demand curve and an upward sloping positively sloped supply curve and uh, this demand and supply model would help us come up with the price of a particular commodity in the market called p star and you would be able to come up with a equilibrium quantity of goods demanded and supplied which would be q star now this particular model that we're going to be talking about which is called the asad model is going to be pretty similar to this particular model but now we're going to be talking about the economy as a whole so we'll be talking about not just one market one good we'll be talking about all the goods in the economy which means that in the discussion that follows this quantity over here is not going to be just one quantity it's not going to be an ice cream it's not going to be a single product it's going to be everything that's produced in the economy and if you recall uh, when you we were talking about the gdp we said that the gdp was the sum of all final goods and services produced within a year within a certain boundary so when we talk about all of the goods and services this q when we talking about the aggregate goods and services this q becomes the gdp 
which we will be representing by income and if you recall we said GDP is going to be income in some in some cases it's going to be expenditure in some and total output in others and since now that we're talking about the whole economy this demand curve is going to be the demand for not just one good but the demand for everything in the economy so it's going to be the aggregate demand which is going to be called AD AD is the sum of all demands in the economy and this supply is going to be the supply of all the goods in the economy and it's going to be called the aggregate supply since, and since we're talking about the whole economy this price now is going to be called the price of everything in the economy or you could call it the general price level so, so this P is going to be representing general price levels and you can think of it like the CPI that we 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 um, discussed in the previous video or the GDP deflator. Either one is good enough. Deflator. So till this point, what we've said is that the aggregate supply and aggregate demand model is going to be very similar to the demand and supply model that we've discussed in microeconomics and we'll be we since we're talking about the the economy as a whole the q which was the quantity of a particular good demanded or supplied in a particular market in the case of microeconomics is going to be gdp now and p which was price of a commodity is now going to be um the general price levels prevailing in the economy. So the discussion of macroeconomics will concern time frames. Uh, this means that when we are discussing the aggregate demand and supply model, we want to discuss what happens in the short run and what happens in the long run. In order to do this, we need to somehow come up with a mechanism to actually distinguish between the short run and the long run. It's kind of difficult to actually decide what is short and what is long. For somebody, two months would be short, more than two would be long. For others, maybe a year is short, maybe two years is short run. So to make things easier for us, what we'll be assuming is that in the short run, prices are sticky. By sticky, I mean they don't change. I normally talk about this with my students and use the example of a particular restaurant that sells chicken kadai. Let's, let's assume the restaurant sells the chicken kadai for a thousand rupees and they find the price of the chicken has gone up. Now the question is, do they change the price today? The restaurant owners will wait and see if this was just a temporary increase in prices. Maybe after a few weeks, they might decide to change the price. But in the short run, they don't change prices. That is what I mean when I say that the short run is when prices don't change. In the long run, prices can change. In the long run, prices are flexible. Before we move on to the actual model, we have one last thing to discuss. Your aggregate demand of the economy is basically how much the agents of the economy are willing to spend in the economy. And if you recall, when we were talking about GDP, we said that GDP, when we calculate it using the expenditure approach, is basically the consumption, expenditure, investment, and expenditure government spending and net ex expenditure on net exports added together. So your aggregate demand curve is basically your GDP's equation. And uh, in the ASAD model, we're going to be saying that this aggregate demand curve is downward sloping. Uh, the reason for the aggregate demand curve being downward sloping is explained using the theory of quantity of money. Uh, the theory of quantity of money is explained by 
the following equation uh, mv is equal to py where m is the quantity of money in circulation v is the number of times this money changes hands or, velo or the velocity uh, the quantity of money at any given time in an economy can be assumed to be constant. Uh, similarly, the velocity or the number of transactions that happen in the economy can be assumed to be a constant number as well. And this we're saying is equal to the general price levels multiplied by the productivity or the real GDP. Since at any given time, uh, the quantity of money in circulation and the average number of transactions in an economy can be assumed to be a constant number. We assume it to be uh, the a constant number 1. This equation transforms into 1 is equal to Py and we find that P and Y are actually inversely related. Therefore, that is why the aggregate demand curve is downward sloping. Uh, this aggregate demand curve is affected by the amount of money people have if they have more money they can demand more and the aggregate demand shifts outwards if for some reason uh, people lose the amount of money that they have in their pockets the aggregate demand curve moves inwards now let's talk about the long run aggregate supply uh, this long run aggregate supply is derived from the classical side of macroeconomics in which uh, the assumption is that prices don't matter when it comes to production of things and if you have a certain amount of so the long run aggregate supply basically says that output y is a function of capital labor land and technology uh, and please note over here that price levels are not included which means prices don't matter when it comes to the production of y bar If we have this certain level of capital, labor, land and technology over here, we can produce Y bar amount of GDP. This Y bar amount of GDP is called the natural output of the economy. It is called the output of the economy at full potential. At full potential, you're assuming that everyone who's willing and able to work is actually employed. And at this level of output, the economy exhibits the natural rate of unemployment which we've discussed earlier as being u n this uh, long run aggregate supply curve is going to be shifting if there is a change in one of the factors of production if you suddenly have more capital your long run aggregate supply moves upwards if for some reason uh, half of your population dies and there is a shortfall of labor the long run aggregate supply moves inwards but normally this long run aggregate supply shifts because of a change in technology uh, the last curve we want to discuss is the short run aggregate supply curve and we describe the short run by saying that during the short run price levels are constant and this was an assumption that we made if we don't make that assumption then the short run aggregate supply curve looks like a normal supply curve that we saw in microeconomics however for the purpose of this course we'll be assuming that the short run aggregate supply curve looks like a flat line because we're assuming that in the short run prices are sticky they don't change in the short run this curve going up or down only means that prices are changing it does not mean that the supply is increasing or decreasing for example if this curve goes up this just means that the general price levels have increased from p0 to p1 in no way does it mean that the supply has increased or decreased now that we've discussed this we'll go on to the actual model till this point we've discussed some basics about the aggregate demand and aggregate supply model in which we've said that this model is going to be used by you guys to figure out what happens in the economy when a certain event happens and you'll be able to use this model to come up with an assessment about what would happen to the, the GDP what would happen to the price levels and what would happen to the unemployment in the economy so 
after you're done with this model you'd be able to assess what would be happening for example in the economy due to the coronavirus so let's uh, start off by making the model once again this model has general price levels on the y-axis it has the GDP the real GDP on the x-axis there is an aggregate demand curve which is downward sloping because of the theory of quantity of money and this aggregate demand curve shifts when the amount of money in people's pockets or the money supply changes then we said there is a short run aggregate supply curve and this changes when an event happens that causes the price levels of everything in the economy to change so whenever price levels change this curve shifts and finally you have the long run aggregate supply curve which is a vertical curve and this long run aggregate supply curve shifts when one of the factors of production changes and we said that normally this shift is due to a change in technology and we also said that this long run aggregate supply curve is basically telling us the natural output of the economy which is represented by y bar and at this natural uh, level of output we're assuming all resources are being used at their full potential and when we're using people at full potential we're saying that they're at their natural rate of unemployment and this level is around three four percent depending on the country now that we've come up with this this model the first thing we need to understand is where the equilibrium lies so recall from your microeconomics an equilibrium happens when your demand curve cuts the supply curve now this model is tricky because it is going to be having two kinds of equilibriums where the aggregate demand cuts the short run aggregate supply it's going to be called the short run equilibrium where the aggregate demand cuts the long run supply curve it's going to be called the long run equilibrium so if you note over here at point a at the point at point A, aggregate demand is intersecting short run aggregate supply. So, point A is the short run equilibrium in the economy, which is saying that in the short run, the economy is going to be stabilized at a price level, general price level of P0, and a natural output of Y bar. Interestingly enough, at point A, the demand and the long run aggregate supply are also intersecting. So, point A is special because at point A, you have a short run equilibrium and the long run equilibrium as well you are at a stable position now that you've understood what an equilibrium is in this model let's discuss a couple of other cases see if you can identify the short run and the long run equilibrium over here recall that an equilibrium is where the aggregate demand curve this curve cuts one of the supply curves so at point a a supply curve is is cutting another supply curve so point a is not an equilibrium how about point b at point b the demand curve is cutting the short run aggregate supply curve which means point B is the short run equilibrium. How about point C? At point C, the aggregate demand is cutting the long run aggregate supply curve. So point C is the long run equilibrium. Now that we've understood this, let's go and see what happens when something causes the economy to shift away from the equilibrium so this example is one in which the economy is at equilibrium at point a and at point a we have both the short run and the long run equilibrium let's suppose that the stock market crashes and people who've invested their money lose their money what do you think should happen in this model? 
recall that the aggregate demand curve shifts when the amount of money in people's pocket changes. Short run aggregate supply change, shifts when price levels change. And the long run aggregate supply shifts when one of the factors of production changes. Now in this case, people have lost their money. When they've lost their money, this means that, that the amount of money in their pockets goes down. They are able to afford less goods and their aggregate demand down moves inwards. When the aggregate demand curve moves inwards, we want to find out what happens to the economy in the short run and in the long run. So in order to figure out what happens in the short run and the long run, you identify the equilibriums in the model. You don't come up with your own theories about what would happen. You look at the model and you identify the equilibrium points. So the point where the short run aggregate supply curves cuts the a new aggregate demand curve is going to be the short run equilibrium. The point where the aggregate demand curve cuts the long run aggregate curve, uh, curve uh, is going to be the long run equilibrium. So what happens is that you were at point A earlier but because of a, a, a stock market crash people lost their money and the aggregate demand shifted. So the economy moves from point A at point A you need to remember that the GDP was Y bar that was what the economy was producing and the unemployment was at its natural rate let's assume it's it's 5% when the aggregate demand falls the economy first moves to the short run equilibrium and the economy moves from point A and moves to point B what's happening at point B at point B what are the price levels the price was P bar earlier at point A how about point B in the short run prices remain at P bar because you move from point A to point B and the price levels were the same. How about GDP? What happens to the GDP? So the GDP was Y bar but now the, the equilibrium is saying that the GDP is going to be Y1. At Y1 the GDP has fallen to Y bar, Y1. So what has happened is, because of an increase in the aggregate demand, uh, the GDP has fallen to Y1. And when GDP falls, it's basically saying that the production in the country has decreased. When the production of the country decreases, what do you think happens to unemployment? When you're producing less goods, you, you need fewer people to actually produce those goods. So unemployment in the economy increases. So note over here, that the unemployment runs in the opposite direction to the GDP on the axis. While going from left to right, the GDP increases, going from left to right, unemployment falls. So what has happened over here is, you've concluded that if the stock market crashes, what would happen in the short run, which would, would be six months or one year, is that the price levels might remain the same, considering everything else remains constant. The price levels would remain the same, the GDP would fall and unemployment would increase. How about the long run? Now if six months have passed by and you move from point A to point B, this is a short run and now gradually the economy will start to move towards the long run equilibrium. So the economy will move towards B and then start to move towards point C, which is the long run equilibrium. This is the long run equilibrium. What's happening at point C? At point C price levels are lower so in the long run what would happen is prices would fall as you'd move from point B to point C how about the GDP the GDP which had fallen to Y1 would eventually return to its natural level which is Y bar so the GDP would increase and it'd be back to Y bar which is the natural level similarly as GDP increases and production increases unemployment would fall again and come back to its natural rate and this is called the natural rate hypothesis which says that eventually the unemployment will always come back to its natural rate in the long run